James here, and today we're going to install this M.2 SSD into my motherboard and PC. Now, this is from XOC. This is, of course, their PCIe Gen 3 M.2 NVMe SSD, the G300. Now, this is a 512 gigabyte SSD. Uh, should do well in here. Of course, I do have my front panel off. Uh, your guys' panel may change or swap out differently depending on the PC. Mine had two mounting screws popped up and came out. Now, we are going to, of course, pull the graphics card out right here, which I don't normally want to do uh, while I have an installed PC, but I do have to do it to get to access to the SSD slots. Now, this is actually quite easy if you have a screwdriver, literally unclip the two cables. Remember which cables go where. Uh, if you guys are really worried about that, take pictures uh, and all of that uh, good stuff. Now, I have two thumb screws holding this graphics card in, of course, right here. Now, the even better part is, is with this motherboard, I actually literally just have a little button that I press that releases my graphics card from, of course, the slot that it's in. And then it's out. Now, I always suggest putting this in a place of non-static. Uh, I'm going to just put it on the counter because I really don't need to. Now, my motherboard has multiple placements for SSDs. I can actually put one a couple here, a couple here, a couple here, and a couple here. Now, we are going to find the most opened section to do that in. Okay, now then here, I remember I have an SSD here and I have an SSD here. So we're actually going to pull the third tray down, which is right here. There are two screws. Now, remember, guys, this is static electricity that you don't want to mess with. So tap your case in, like, metal air areas to get rid of that static clean. Once you unscrew this, you're going to pop off the cover. Uh, the cover may take... Take a second to fully pop off if you need to. Uh, it does look like I actually have an SSD there as well. So we're going to close this one back up as the top of that. And we're going to go down even farther. Like I said, I do have a lot of SSD. So, you know, grabbing an SSD slot that's open is always hit or miss. So we're going to pull down the bottom tray where we actually have two more slots uh, for this. So that is where we're going to go with this one. And we're going to install it, of course, and pull it off. Now, like I said, I have two more slots down here with no problem, so it is not an issue. The better part about all this is, is my motherboard has these little slots that are actually auto locked, so you don't need the screws to do this. Now, remember though, the one thing I'm gonna tell you is, is on back of these trays, you have a thermal paste or a thermal pad. You will peel this pad and then have that stick to the SSD, so do remember to do that as you do this. Now also remember when you're installing this to insert it properly and set it in there fully with it. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm actually going to use this back slot for purposes. Uh, we're going to press it into that hole and slide it down. Now, it is probably a little hard for you to see this, but it is in there like this. Once it's in there, we're going to like press it down and set it in. There is a locking mechanism right here. This locking mechanism will lock over and hold it into place. Now that is all it takes to install that SSD. Now remember, we do need to pull the thermal uh, tape off for this thermal pad. So we do need to pull this thermal pad right here. And I'm gonna back you up slightly for this. So this little blue plastic does need to come off of this thermal pad. It's actually quite simple. Uh, it's rather sticky though with this. So do remember, you don't wanna peel, you just wanna peel the actual layering on the outside, not the full piece. So we now have it off. Now this, of course, is plastic. It's going to stick to everything. Now we're going to reverse stick this on just like we did when we pulled it off. So it's going to set up here just like this. You remember, go into the screw holes, of course, grab the correct screw driver, and of course, screw it back in. That is literally all it's going to take to connect this piece in. Now I do have one more open slot for an M.2. I do have a lot of M.2s in this because I do need a lot of hard drive space. Reverse everything you did, including the graphics card. So you're going to grab your graphics card. You're going to make sure that it lines up into the slot like you would expect perfectly well. It'll lock in place. You'll grab the two thumb screws. Now these thumb screws, of course, if I back out a little more, you'll see we'll go over here. The first one I'm going to do is, of course, the bottom one to set it in there just, you know, slightly loose. And then I'm going to grab the top one as well. and set that up. Now, of course, I did drop it. You could do this by hand if you needed to, to pre-start it 
Now I'm trying to record and do this at the same time, which I was trying to show you guys, you know, the purposes of videoing going in. Now with this, of course, we're gonna line this up just like this. We're gonna then tighten it up, of course, as we need. We're gonna make sure everything lines up just perfectly well, and then we're gonna reconnect our cables. Now this is, of course, is a multi-pin connection, so do make sure that these connect cables are connected back up and in place perfectly well. You're then gonna put your case back together and plug it in. Now, we're gonna come back once we're plugged in and we're gonna do a speed test on that SSD. Okay, now that we have the XOC installed and we're back on the PC, you guys see I have Crystal Disk Mark up. Now we're gonna go into, of course, the SSD that we want and we're gonna find the proper one. And I do have multiple ones, but we're gonna go down to Drive F, which is 477 gigabytes after install. Now remember, it is 512 gigabytes, but they always leave a little bit for other things and other purposes. Now we're going to click this. We are then going to click the run button and it's going to run the speed test. Now the speed test, of course, is just going to be that. It's going to be a speed test that you guys are going to see in real life time. Now we may speed this up depending on how long it takes to do the speed test. Right there is your first read right, uh, read for it, 3528. Uh, which is not bad for megabytes per second. Now, it's going to go into the second read and write or read section, of course, with that as well. 3,529. It went up slightly a bit. Now, of course, we're going to go into the third uh, one. It's going to do the same, same read test with that, of course, right there. Uh, and that's where it's going to just start reading. Of course, it may take a little longer as we go down into this. Right there, it goes about 2281. And they usually sometimes drop on the lower ones. Uh, but go with the upper ones, of course, but hey, you know, that's still not bad speeds. Now we do have that final read speed right here that's going to go on. And of course, it's always going to be really small. Every speed test I've ever done with any SSD has always done that to me. And that just, you know, for the life of me, hey, that's what it is. Now we're going to go into the right sequence, which you guys are going to see right here as we go with that as well. Look at that, 3,088 megabytes a second of write speed on that test. It's actually pretty phenomenally well done for 512 gigabyte M.2 Gen 3. Now, of course, we're going to do the second, third, and fourth write. Right there is another 3,053, which is very decently well done. Now, of course, we're going to go back down into the next speed, and that, of course, is going to be megabytes again with this third speed uh, write test uh, right here. Now, 1,429 megabytes a second isn't bad for that final uh, layer right there. Now, we have that last, of course, test to go into this, and that is going to actually happen right about now as we come through. It always takes a little bit. Right there, we upped our write speeds compared to our read on that last one from the last set, which is totally fine, 237 megabytes. So, guys, go with that top sec the first two speeds, and you're going to do perfectly well with this. This XOC... Uh, G300 512 uh, gigabyte SSD is going to do pretty well for you guys. I want to thank you for watching and hope you guys have a great one.